I joined the army on the 23rd of August 1971 and that was my 16th birthday and I served for eight years and 57 days and 12 hours and I like to say but who's keeping count. I had a great time in the army, I was a physical training instructor, uh, I did all sorts of adventure training, I um, w was a personal survival um, instructor uh, and when I left the army all of that went away. And I remember I'd been out of the army and um, I started to get really just down and confused and lost. And so I asked somebody, you know, what do you do in cases like this? And they said, well, you might try calling um, the Good Samaritans. I called Good Samaritans and I launched into a conversation. I said, you know, hi, I've been out of the army for about three months. And, and I, that's about as far as I got. And the, the gentleman on the other end interjected and said, excuse me, sir, I hope you don't mind me asking, but are you suicidal? And I was shocked at this. I was actually taken aback because I absolutely wasn't. That was the last, the furthest thing from my mind. And I said, of course, well, no, no, I'm not. That had never entered my mind. And he said, in as many words, oh, good. Well, when you are, call me back. And I, I think in the 70s, because I joined in 71 and got out in 79, I think in that time, we didn't have the resources to deal with the military so much as we do today, and it's getting um, better and better, which really has uh, brought me to this point of um, creating this documentary, Finding Will, which is basically all about the uh, correlation between Shakespeare's text and veterans either serving or ex. In the first 14 weeks of training, the British Army takes a young person and adjusts their way of thinking and being beyond recognition. I am sure the other branches of the services are all very similar in nature. Depending on how long that person serves will usually dictate how long it will take to leave after they are discharged. Becoming a civilian again once service life is over has its challenges. They vary from typical issues of transitioning into a less organized lifestyle as a civvy and for some, the greater challenges of living with PTSD. It has long been recognized that the arts are a tool in which service and ex-service personnel can transition into civilian life and in many cases become artists in their own right. This documentary Finding Will will take a look at how soldiers are using Shakespeare's text combined with their own experiences to deal with the challenges of transitioning back into civilian life. The Soldiers Arts Academy. My name is Amanda Faber and I run the Soldiers Arts Academy and that's an organisation which helps veterans and their families to engage with the creative arts. My name is Sean Johnson People call me Jono. Uh, I served just short of 12 years in the Royal Artillery. I was born into a military family. My father served uh, for many years. My brothers served. My, my nephew served. So joining the military is all I knew. And I've got to be honest, probably the best years of my life. What happens when we have served? Who do we turn to for support? My background is in uh, film and television and I started working with veterans um, on a production in 2012 and it was a life changing experience just seeing the difference that it made to the veterans that I was working with, seeing the impact of the creative arts on them and it just snowballed, we just started, we did one production and then we did another and I was working with a number of groups at the time taking, student, taking veterans into schools um, to run workshops and from that we, we decided to set up the Soldiers Arts Academy. When we have left, how do we fit back in? Well, let's look, let's look at the arts for one, uh, and certainly with Shakespeare, it's not your typical bedfellows with, with, with 
uh, junior ranks in the military. Um, so when I when I came out and I was trying to fit in somewhere, um, I, I came across a group called at that time the Combat Veteran Players, and it was a bunch of Armed Forces veterans. Uh, we got together. Uh, we were working with a, uh, somebody from America, Jackie McLaughlin at the time, and we started working on Shakespeare. Now, my first thoughts were, I can't even read it. I don't even get this. What am I supposed to do with this? I had heard about this bloke called Shakespeare as a kid, but it wasn't my thing. Um, so uh, uh, it started just by chance. It was supposed to be an, uh, a therapeutic, and was, uh, experiment, and suddenly, you're surrounded with about four or five blokes, uh, and, it, and that grew, who had the same common um, common problems in life. Uh, we're all in the same room. We're given a script, uh, *Midsummer's Night's Dream*, and then that's when suddenly and very quickly, the magic started to happen. So it was uh, it was quite a challenge. Uh, I thought it would be straight in, straight out, have a bit of fun but there was some changes starting to happen within the guys and it was quite interesting. So we, um, we kept pegging at it and what we liked, because we had Shakespeare, it was challenging. The old grey matter was putting into place now. Uh, not only were you starting to understand what this bloke was about, William Shakespeare, you wanted to, like all military veterans, do the best and, and, and if not better. So with that script, with that experiment, very, very quickly, we had our first production uh, of A Midsummer's Night's Dream. Uh, and again, we thought that would go, we thought that would be it, but we knew we had something special. And the Soldiers Arts Academy kind of came in a little bit later, uh, once uh, uh, Combat Veteran Plays has kind of faded out. Um, but can I just say, uh, for me, on the point of Combat Veteran Plays, it was here in that beautiful theatre where on a Saturday morning I played Hamlet uh, and it was just, uh, wow, an incredible experience. And I've grown from that, not only mentally, um, but artistically as well. So uh, I'm, just, I'm just so in love with the fact that Globe are amazing. Can we see ourselves through the eyes of another character? So, one of the great things about Shakespeare's text is it can be easy for a veteran to access an experience through one of Shakespeare's characters and not have to directly deal with it themselves. Um, an example might be To Be or Not To Be, which is basically Hamlet, Shakespeare's text on Hamlet who is considering whether life is really worth living in a very simple um, nutshell there. So, Sadly, a lot of uh, military, ex-military people um, have to deal with PTSD. And in dealing with that, if you actually have to deal with it yourself, it really is a stressful emotional weight. But if you can deal with that secondary to yourself through uh, another character's voice, you're still having to take a look at what you're going through, but it isn't quite as direct. So that's one of the simple ones. Another one is uh, the iambic pentameter. Um, studies have been done on it and where they're saying Shakespeare wrote in the natural heartbeat of the, the rhythm of the human heartbeat. So you've got 10 and 11 counts very simply, so a 10 count is a strong count. So uh, a character, Henry V would go, once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. He's trying to rally his troops, it's a strong count, so you get to be strong. Um, to be or not to be, that is the question. That's an 11 count, and what that was determined is that that was a, a weak, or they used to say a feminine count. I hope we don't say that anymore, but a weak count. He's considering potentially taking his own life. So that, what that alludes to is the way that a character is thinking. Veterans, Shakespeare, and transferable skills. Veterans getting involved with the creative arts, and particularly with theater, has got two aspects. First of all, it's got the acting side of it and just physically getting on stage and, and, and performing. And there are lots of links between what people do in the military and what you have to do to be an actor. And there's a lot of transferable skills. And so first of all, a lot of veterans who try acting find that they're incredibly good at it and that they, they transition into that sort of new skill and into that new job incredibly easily. The second thing is, is performing Shakespeare. And I think that what everybody says consistently is that Shakespeare understood veterans. He knew about the lives of veterans, whether that was because he, he met with them socially, 
um, whether he, he knew people, but he seems to have been had a very close sort of knowledge of, of veterans' lives and the issues that they face. And therefore, I think that people performing uh, Shakespeare find that transition into his text incredibly easy again. There's also, I think, just something very special about connecting to the experiences of a veteran in the past, who's, who's of, often in Shakespeare's characters, they've experienced difficulties, linking that into your current situation as a veteran transitioning, and then looking forward with those skills that you've got into becoming an actor. And I think that that process is an incredibly exciting one for me to witness, but also just to see that how much it actually gives the veterans in, in their recovery and their retraining and their onward journey. As is the case with many veterans, there are memories that never seem to leave us. Sean Johnson experienced one such memory that comes back to haunt him when he least expects it. One of the ways in which he has learned to deal with it is by telling his story and combining it with Shakespeare's text. I was the first soldier on the scene and this woman ran up to me and grabbed hold of my combat jacket frantically trying to explain something. At first I had no idea what she was rambling on about. I was more concerned about the safety of my rifle and she being a little too close for comfort. On operational tours of duty, I trusted no one outside the military family band of brothers. The terrorists had taken her old man, an off-duty soldier, downstairs to execute him. He asked for his slippers and he told him, you don't need slippers where you're going, pal. And they shot him. If our patrol had arrived just a few minutes earlier, he might be alive today. She won't let me forget, you know, his wife. Now she visits me often, at night, in my dreams. And I keep seeing that frightened face. Tears in her eyes, pleading for our help, my help. And I hold out my arms to hug the ghostly image, to tell her I'm sorry. And every time I get close to her, she disappears, leaving me with nothing. Nothing except guilt. I was a right mess when I left the military. Paranoia took over. My drinking got out of control. I started to lose it upstairs, to be or not to be, and all that nonsense. But no one had a clue that I was mind fragged. No, whenever in the company of others, I just smiled, joked, carried on as usual. In truth, I had begun to decline mentally. I couldn't hold down a job or relationship. My mind, my own deformity, was doing overtime. I was always thinking, thinking, and thinking. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays are lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow, a poor play that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Each year we remember those who have served and those who have given everything. It, it was an absolutely extraordinary experience coming here to the Globe with a group of veterans to mark the 100th anniversary. And the performance was absolutely riveting. It was sold out, and I think there were lots of veterans in the audience, but watching their reaction to what was happening was an extraordinary thing. But also watching the veterans perform on stage talking about their own experiences but then performing Shakespeare and doing it as a group together was an, a, a, a just absolutely wonderful. I think it was one of the things that will you know stay with, stay with me for a very long time and for everybody who watched it.
So now what? What comes next? What I'm hoping is that um, with being part of um, the Soldiers Arts Academy and working with them is that we can grow this now and create something more accessible, more powerful and something where um, people, ex-military, will find it okay to step forward and say, not only do I need help, but the creative arts are a great way to do it. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heavens of invention, a kingdom for a stage, princes to act and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. But pardon, gentles all, the flat and raised spirits that hath dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden O the very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts. Into a thousand parts divide one man and make imaginary pursuance, for tis your thoughts that now must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping o'er times, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. For the which supply, admit me, chorus, to this history, who, prologue-like, your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge, our play.